Hey everybody, it's Thursday. That means time for another episode of Throwback Thursday. And today, we're going to open up this authenticated box of 1983 Fleer. There's three really good rookie cards in here, possibly. Tony Gwynn, Ryan Sandberg, and Wade Boggs. Now back in 1984, this is the first ever Beckett, by the way, first ever issue. Uh, the hot card back then in this set was Ron Kittle. Rookie card was worth $2.50. The Gwyn Boggs and Sandberg all were doing pretty well as the second best card in the set for $2 a piece. So they've held their value over the years in terms of being one of the top cards in the sets. Now, today you can pick up one of those cards raw in good shape for about $10. Bucks. Um, if you get it graded and it comes out to a PSA 10, they sell on eBay for anywhere between $100 upwards to about $125. We're going to try to pull a PSA 10 rookie card of Tony Gwynn, Wade Boggs, Ryan Sandberg tonight. we got some sponsors for the video. I put this up on Patreon. It sold out within a minute. Uh, Dallas F's got the top right stack of packs. Then James S has the bottom right. Linda W has the top left. And Darren C has the bottom left. There's... 36 packs in a box, plus two additional packs. We'll have to divvy those up for you guys. Maybe, um, I don't know how we'll do that, but we'll figure out a way so you guys can get all the cards from this box. There's 660 cards in the set. You can see there's the design. Bruce Suter is featured on the front, and they also make a note that there's a picture on the back in black and white. Um, pretty cool here. It says, 1981 Flair, believe it or not, was rated number one by Baseball Hobby News. And in 1982, Fleer was featured on World Series TV. And now in 1983, they are going all out and putting photos on the front and the back. 1981 was Fleer's first year as a major contender um, taking on tops. And uh, they were around for quite some time until fading away um, several years ago. All right, so here we go. Let's uh, open this up and see what we get. Um, as you can see, this is a baseball card exchange authenticated box. So I'll just show you the bottom again real quick. Uh, you can see 1983 Fleer wax box authenticated by Steve Hart, the owner of the baseball card exchange. He has authenticated and inspected the packs in this box to make sure that all were sealed and non tampered with because when you're buying packs from the eighties, um, there's always a chance that somebody possibly open the packs up took the good cards out replaced them with commons and then sealed them back up it was easy to do back then so you always have to be wary of that that's why i always try to do baseball card exchange boxes authenticated boxes for these um, throwback thursdays so here we go a look at the inside these packs look pretty fresh and clean very nice check those out there's our two bonus packs at the top we will put those aside. We'll do those last and determine what we do with those. Probably we'll have to uh, divide the cards up uh, between the two um, people on each side. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'll figure out a way. All right, first on the clock, we got Dallas F. He's going to get this entire stack of nine packs. I know Dallas loves his Cubs, so he's obviously hoping for a Ryan Sandberg. We'll see if we can pull one for you. There's the back. You can see it's telling to collect all 660 cards. Packs are pretty, um, pretty basic. Pretty, uh, I actually like these packs. Not a whole lot of uh, stuff going on here. So let's get to uh, opening these bad boys up. We got a Smith Brothers card on the back, and um, each pack will feature a sticker card. So Dallas, you did get a Cubs card there. You got a Cubs sticker. And um, here is the design. You can see it's a uh, kind of like a bland design. At least it has the logo down there in the bottom left, which is pretty nice. That's a pretty cool card. The Silver Shoe, Ricky Henderson, super special star. Enrique Romo, Daryl Evans had a nice career. All-star catchers with Carlton Fisk and um, Gary Carter, Hall of Famers there. Al Oliver almost made the Hall of Fame or – you know, had the numbers that he should have been considered over 2,900 career hits for Al Oliver. And there's the Smith Bros, Ozzy and Lonnie. So that's the first pack for Dallas. Pack number two. 
I don't know if it said how much these cost back in the day. I want to say probably 30 cents a pack. Let me see if it's on there. It's not on. Yeah, 30 cents per pack these would cost. Uh, a lot of people back in the uh, early 80s or the junk wax era would just pick these packs up at the checkout. There's a Joe Morgan Hall of Famer right there. Don Baylor. Bill Buckner. Dave Dravecki, who lost his pitching arm, believe it or not. Jerry Remy, he is an announcer for the Red Sox, I do believe. Gary Maddox. But yeah, we would pick these up at the checkout. There were baseball cards were everywhere back then. Anywhere you went, any store basically that sold stuff, there were baseball cards there. And it was awesome. And they were affordable. You didn't have like five dollar packs like you do now. Tim Raines with the Expos. Steve Hammond, Fergie Jenkins. So you're getting some pretty decent uh, Hall of Famers in here. Fergie Jenkins with the Cubbies there. Phil Necro, another Hall of Famer. Art Howe, former manager. He was in Moneyball, or at least his character was in Moneyball. All right, next pack up. 1983. I was only um, two years old when these came out. There he is, the legend, John Wathen. I say he's a legend because we did a throwback Thursday for 1981 Donruss, and we were getting like three John Wathen cards in every single pack. That it was, it literally became a joke. Rick Sutcliffe, great, great career. Bill Madlock, Charlie Moore. So no big rookie cards yet. None of the big three. Still got plenty more time. Ricky Henderson, that's a nice card. Ricky Henderson, born on Christmas Day. That's one thing I always remember about Ricky Henderson. 12, 25, 58. Stolen base numbers off the charts. 130 steals in 1982. You could probably add up the top five guys uh, for baseball for steals this year, and they wouldn't add up to 130. There we go. Kyle Ripken Jr., second-year card. Uh, that's currently the... Uh, I think that's the fourth best card in the set behind those rookie cards. Kyle Ripken, second year card. That's pretty awesome. I never had this card growing up. 1983 Fleer, Kyle Ripken Jr. His rookie is 82. There's the back of that Ripken. A little bit off center um, from left to right. Actually, it's probably like 2080. Um, but still pretty cool. Like that card a lot. And Ott, Randy Johnson. That's not the Randy Johnson we all know and love. The pitcher, but Randy Johnson nonetheless. Carlos Diaz. Looks, I wonder what stadium that is. Veteran Stadium, maybe? Sometimes it's always fun to look at the uh, stadiums in the background and try to figure out what stadium um, was taking place at. I'm pretty good with the current stadiums, but old stadiums, not the greatest at um, because I was just a little kid. Ron Hassey, Ed Vandenberg, Ricky Wright, Steve Kemp. This pack, Mike Sosha, multiple-time all-star there. Brian Downing, Ellis Valentine. All right, so Kyle Ripken is Dallas's best card so far. Got a Bo Diaz on the back. Gary Gaetti, Paul Malder, young-looking Paul Malder right there. It's opening day today, by the way, Rusty Staub. Hopefully, you were able to watch your favorite team play. Steve Garvey had a great career. Pirates went down in a loss in Cincinnati, unfortunately. I wasn't able to go because I had to work. But it's the time of year where everyone's hopeful of uh, their team having a shot at the playoffs. It's also the time of year where everybody just absolutely freaks out after one loss and thinks the season is over. There's uh, Andre Dawson is a nice one there, also Dave Winfield. So, I'm sure Indians fans are thinking the uh, season is over. They got shut out by the Twins, so probably about half of them think that uh, Twins are going to win a division now. But it's just one game. It's a long season. This is Dallas's last pack. All right. You, you got it, Ryan Sandberg. There we go. Last pack, Ryan Sandberg, rookie card for Dallas. Dallas loves his Cubs. Um, in a lot of the breaks, he always picks up the Cubs for his team. And we have the Ryan Sandberg rookie card for you, Dallas. 
right here. A little bit off center from left to right again, as is common with a lot of the cards from this time period. Um, but pretty awesome. Let's check out Ryan Sandberg's rookie. You can see he actually played with the Phillies in 1981, had a small cup of coffee. A lot of people don't know that about Ryan Sandberg. Uh, but you saw he had six of bats in 81. Uh, wasn't enough for them to make a card for him in 1982. So um, 1982, he had 635 at bats. Pretty good year. And he got his rookie card in 83. So nice looking card there. Ryan Sandberg rookie card. Um, I don't know if I should one touch these or not. Um, you know what? Let's let's one touch it. I can one touch your Ryan Sandberg rookie card. I'm sure that, um, I don't know if you're going to get that graded or not. If you do get it graded, it's going to grade out pretty well. It looks really sharp. Only problem is um, it's off center. So if, I mean, if you do get a, a nine or a 10, which I, hopefully you do, likely it'll have that little uh, qualifier there. It says OC next to it, but um, pretty nice. Ryan Sandberg rookie card for Dallas. I know Dallas is, um, Probably pretty stoked about that. Let's check out the rest of this pack. I did bring three one touches downstairs. Um, I don't have too many, too many more of them. I'm kind of running low on my one touches, but there's our first hit out of 83 Fleer Ryan Sandberg rookie card going to Dallas from the top right stack. All right, next up we're gonna do the bottom right stack, and this is gonna be for James, James S. All right, got your bottom right stack. Here we go, James S, nine packs. Now we need to find Wade Boggs, Tony Gwynn, Kari Yastrzemski. That's near the end of his career. I think this might be Yastrzemski's final card. You can see the nice, long career. His rookie card was 1960 tops, I do believe. Nice, long career for Carl Yastrzemski. Dave LaRoche, that's Adam LaRoche's dad. Ken Griffey Sr., that's Junior's dad. All right, let's see. Some checklist action in this pack. Don Slot, former Pirates catcher. Pack number two for James. These packs are kind of harder to open. I'm, I wanted to kind of preserve the packs, but um, the seal is pretty good on these. So I'm just ripping them open now. Dave Henderson, decent career. Carlton Fisk, there's a Hall of Famer for you. Buddy Bell, decent career. George Foster, Dwayne Murphy. I wonder if these stickers in these packs still stick. Have you ever tried to uh, use one of these stickers? I know for 90 Fleer, because um, just for a crappy prize, I tried to give away some 90 Fleer stickers to my students, and like they, they tried to use them, they like just fell right off. Harold Baines, Hall of Famer. Gary Carter, Hall of Famer. Mike Scott was a beast for a good many years in the 80s. And um, not a bad pack there. Pretty cool. They gave you a team name and a team hat for the sticker. That's probably better than the gum, quite honestly. I mean, the gum is was pretty cool. Back in the day, I used to love the gum in Tops packs. It used to taste really good and everything. But it would lose its flavor so quickly. And then uh, it would be gone. But the bad part about the gum is it would destroy the final card in every pack. And get a, a gum stain on there. So stickers weren't bad. If you were a kid, like under 10 years old, you probably put these stickers all over your binders and, and such. I know I did. I used to have a Pirates binder and a baseball card binder with my best cards in it. Jim Palmer. And I used to use my Fleer stickers on those. Kent Colby, John Candelaria, a couple buckos. I am from Pittsburgh, so I do tend to pay more attention to the Pirates cards. I know some of you get annoyed by that, so I will do my best to uh, not go so crazy over buckos cards. Ron Renneke, former manager. Brett Butler, speedy guy. All right, let's see if we can pull a Boggs here. Boggs or Gwyn? My brother actually found a Tony Gwynn 83 Fleer at one of our flea market excursions about two months ago. Got it for a buck, which was a steal. Again, that card um, usually goes for around 10. There's a nice Ozzy Smith. I don't have too many of these 83 Fleer cards, so I think that's the first time I've ever um, seen that Ozzy Smith. 
Willie Stargell, 83 Fleer. That's uh, his final card, I do believe. You can see in 82, he only played 74 games. It was mostly a pinch hitter because he had 73 at-bats. Um, Willie Stargell. Let's see what else we got here. Next pack. Ken Singleton, another checklist. Lee May. Two checklists in the same pack. I would not be happy with that when I was a kid. Alan Trammell, I used to hate checklists. I always felt it was a waste of a card. I never used them either. I know some people would like actually use them to check off their cards and try to put together the set, but I... Whenever I did that, I would just um, just have like a piece of paper with the cards I needed. It just seemed easier to have one piece of paper than having multiple checklists. Steve Carlton, Hall of Fame right there. Dave Rigetti. That's it for the bottom right stack for James. So no hit there. All right, so next up, let's go with Darren C. from the bottom left. See if Darren can uh, pull one of those rookie cards that we're still missing. I hope so. Tony Gwynn or Wade Boggs. All right, let's see here. These two cards are kind of sticking together a little bit. Steve Sachs. He was a, an all-star back in the day. Mostly commons in that pack for Darren. Darren is one of my... Actually, he's the number one Patreon patron that I have. He's the uh, top guy, a benefactor, so I'm hoping he does really well. Jim Cott, Dave Winfield, it's a nice one. Pete Vukovic, he was actually in Major League One. Steve Trout, and Ron Kittle, rookie card. This was the card that I pointed out was the most valuable card in the set back in 1984. Ron Kittle, rookie card. He hit 50 home runs in AAA in 1982. And they uh, didn't... I don't know why, why they didn't call him up in 82. I guess they did call him up, looks like. That's crazy. Um, he was hitting 345 in 472 at bats, 50 home runs in 82. They called him up as a September call up, it looks like, in 82. Um, Kittle did have some nice seasons where he hit, I think, uh, at least 30 home runs a couple times. But overall, he was just kind of average when it was all said and done. Dennis Eckersley, Hall of Famer. Bob Walk, Pirate announcer. Kind of a crappy name for a pitcher, Bob Walk. You don't want to be walking people. There's a Fountain of Youth, Stargell and Rose. Pete Rose. All right, let's see. Next pack. We've got an Alan Ashby on the back. At least we're not getting, like, two of the same card. What, what's with this card? Vance Law, like, cleaning his glasses. Weird picture choice there. There's uh, Dwayne Kuyper who's um, holding a broken bat. So it looks like they're having a little bit of fun with the pictures on some of these, which is cool. Tommy John, known for the surgery that bears his name. There we go. Tony Gwynn rookie card. Very nice. Darren C. gets the Tony Gwynn rookie card. So now all we need to find is a Wade Boggs. Again, a Tony Gwynn rookie card. If you get it graded, PSA 10, it goes for about 100 bucks in the sold listings on eBay. This one appears to be slightly off-center from left to right, but still really awesome. Tony Gwynn, one of the best hitters of my generation. Hall of Famer, died way too young. There's the back. You can see, wow, he hit 462 and 81 at Amarillo. Yep, definitely uh, mastered that level. Tony Gwynn, what a player. Tony Gwynn was um, on track to maybe hit 400 in 1994 when the strike wiped out his season. I think he still finished hitting like 394 or something like that. We're going to one-touch that for you, Darren. Let's uh, throw that in here. We still got one one-touch left for the Wade Boggs. So hopefully we can put that to use. Get this bad boy in here. Tony Gwynn, rookie card. Trying to make sure it's nice and square. There we go. Check out the corners. You can see these um, these packs were, um, this box was well cared for because, 
you know, sometimes when you open a, a box of cards, the one corner that, you know, was on the outer edge might be a little bit, you know, soft, but this is pretty sharp. These corners are very, very nice uh, for 1983 Fleer. There's the back. Darren, congratulations on your Tony Gwynn. You still have a chance to maybe find a Ryan Sandberg. Might get two of a Sandberg in a box or a Boggs. Let's see what we get. Fingers crossed. Joel Youngblood, he actually uh, appeared for two different teams in the same day. It's called Doing the Youngblood. Two different games in one day. Jack Morris, Hall of Famer. Chris Chambliss, um, known for his playoff heroics with the Yankees. All right, let's see what we got next. Another checklist, Orioles team checklist. Interesting. Eric Schau, Cardinals checklist. Seems like every time we get checklists in this um, product, they're always in the same pack. Vaughn Hayes. That's not a hot pack. That's a cold pack if you get multiple checklists in the same pack. All right, let's see what we got here. Rod Carew, Hall of Famer. Nice career. Dave Kingman hit over 400 home runs. Jim Rice. Nice Hall of Famer card. Lou Pinella, Sweet Lou. A lot of people like him. Mostly known, at least among my generation, for his managerial um, expertise. All right, let's see here. Fred Lynn, Steve Howell. He was always seemingly suspended. Wade Boggs rookie card. Good choice, Darren. You got Boggs and Gwynn in the same stack. Wade Boggs rookie card. All right, so we got all three out of this box. We got the Sandberg, we got the Gwyn, and now we got the Boggs. And we still have another stack left to go for Linda and those two bonus packs. Uh, very, very nice. Wade Boggs rookie card. Check out the back. Uh, you can see he was also ready to go, uh, tearing up the minor leagues, hitting 335 at Pawtucket in 81. Uh, Wade Boggs. Hall of Famer, over 3,000 hits, played for the Red Sox, Yankees, Rays. Um, also, I think he made a pitching appearance once and was throwing some knuckleballs, if I remember correctly. Wade Boggs, we'll one-touch that one for you too, Darren. And now I'm out of one-touches, unfortunately. I'm going to have to go to the LCS and pick up some more. Let's get this in here and uh, check out the corners. You can see it nice and sharp again from the same stack. Wade Boggs rookie card, again, goes for $100 graded. If it comes out to a 10, um, if you check out the recently sold listings on eBay, uh, that's usually the best indicator of uh, the going rate. You can also pick that card up in, you know, raw condition, which means ungraded for about 10 bucks. Sometimes if you get lucky, you might find it for five. So, so far, Darren's the, uh, Darren's the big winner today with two of those rookie cards. Let's see if he has a third in his final pack and he does not so last up we have linda w um, getting that top left pack and then uh, what we'll probably do is uh, we got those two bonus packs that um they put in the box for mr retailer um, i guess they want the they wanted the uh, store owners to buy Fleer and order Fleer for their store if they had to choose between Fleer, Donruss, and Tops. Those two extra packs were an extra 60 cents of profit, I guess. So we're going to probably, I think what we'll do is we'll give those away between um, the people that didn't get hit. So James will get one of those packs, and um, Linda will get the other if she doesn't pull a rookie card here. want to make sure everyone goes home a big winner that sponsored this video. Thank you to all four of you. Really appreciate that. I don't know what I'm going to do next week for Throwback Thursday. Um, still to be determined. I still have a few um, unopened baseball card exchange authenticated boxes to use up. Usually when I buy these boxes, I kind of buy them in bulk. And I just buy like, I don't know, five or six at a time. All right, next pack. Let's see what we got going on here. For Linda, Jesse Orozco. Starting to see some doubles now. Lonnie Smith, Jim Palmer again. So maybe, just maybe, we'll pull another one of those rookies. Maybe another Kyle Ripken Jr. wouldn't be bad. 
We shall see. Ron Renneke again. Brett Butler again. Ed Romero. We're getting some doubles now. Dwight Bernard is the last card there. Some of these guys I, of course, have never heard of. As I was only two years old back then. Wasn't collecting cards, obviously. Alan Trammell again. Ozzy Smith again. All right, let's see. Willie Stargell for a second time. Um, that's it for that pack. I know that Linda likes her Pirates, so Willie Stargell's not too bad. Dave Rigetti. Checklist, so that means we're probably going to have a second checklist in here in the same pack. Yep. Oh, you got three checklists. That's a super ice cold pack. Three checklists in one pack. Man, I would not be happy if I spent 30 cents on that back in 83. It's like three cards that you could have had. It could have been, you know, Boggs, Gwynn, or Sandberg. Jim Sunberg, that's not the uh, Sandberg we wanted. Larry Boa, manager for a time. Steve Carlton, Hall of Famer. Two packs left for Linda. And then we got those two bonus packs that we'll give away to James and Linda if they don't get hits. Kind of like a second chance. Ron Kittle rookie card. That's not the rookie card you probably wanted, though. Um, Steve Sachs. That's it for that. Pack one more pack left to go from that top left stack. Got a Vukovic on the back. Home run threats with a Reggie Jackson on there. Jim Cott, Dave Winfield, and no big rookie card for Linda. So, what we'll do is we got these two bonus packs, we'll just divide them up. Linda gets this one on the left, James gets this one on the right. So, let's see. Let's do Linda's extra bonus pack, see if we can get her an extra hit. We did have a successful break. We got all three big-time rookie cards that we were looking for. Um, so that was good. That's why I like to buy these authenticated boxes. There's our first Mike Schmidt of the night. That's a good one. That's not the Boggs we want. Not Tommy Boggs. We want Wade Boggs. Um, we're not going to find one in there, but Linda's going to get these cards. Now we're going to give James S. this one. Give him a second chance. With the bonus pack of maybe finding a Sandberg Boggs. Howard Johnson, that's his rookie card, I do believe. Hojo, had a really nice career. Gaylord Perry, Hall of Famer, also a great career. Don Sutton, another Hall of Famer. So some good cards in here. Tom Seaver, that's a pretty good pack. No rookie card, though. So overall, I would say that this Throwback Thursday was a success. We did find all three rookie cards that we were looking for. We got the Gwyn, Boggs, and also the Sandberg. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you liked this video. I hope you liked the Throwback uh, Thursday series. If you have any suggestions for future boxes that you want me to open, just leave those down in the comments. Make sure you please subscribe, like the video, and comment. And I will see you all tomorrow.